Let me wrestle with this issue of adultery. Look, this girl who seems very attractive belongs to someone else. It's his pride and joy. It's his love. Am I going to trample on that? No way. Do I want to bring unhappiness to him and to her? No. Does that mean it's harmful to imagine making love to her? It's not the act. You can say it's the thought, and we have it as words of Jesus, that um, he's committed adultery with her already in his mind. But what happens if you know that you haven't? You have no intention of committing the act. I was in love with someone who married someone else. This is before, long before conversion. I was about 17. And uh, we had had sexual relationships with each other. M my first, I think. Yeah. And, uh, yes. And she married someone else. When I went to see her in her flat, uh, where they now live, you know, then lived, he wasn't there. And she, because she still likes me, was amorous towards me. And I was not. Why? Because I didn't love her? Oh no, I still loved her. Because it wouldn't have been a pleasure? Of course it would have been. Because I was religious? No way, not remotely. Didn't believe in that rubbish. Why then would I not actually respond and cuddle her and hold her? And possibly have sexual relationships with her? because I don't want to bring harm. This is marriage. She belongs to someone else. I'm not trampling on that relationship. Would I want him to do that to me? No, that would be awful, wouldn't it? And later in life, I was rewarded with this. My wife was tempted to have an affair with the leader of the band that she uh, um, played in. And we invited him to a meal. And he liked me. We were good to each other. I knew he was keen on her. He met me. No way would he have an affair with her. Even though she wanted it. my reward, didn't I? She stayed with me a good bit longer. And she tried to, um, tried to make the marriage work from her perspective. And it didn't work out. Um, in the end, she, she chose to go. And of course, I was mortified, but that's not the point. Do you see, Adultery is not in the mind. It is not in the mind. It is in the act. Why? Because the act brings unhappiness. If I were to have flirted with her, now that she's married, I would be destroying a relationship that was meant to be true and faithful and a blessing and that they could invest in in the future. And there's no way I'm doing that. Would I have still wanted to imagine making love to her? I expect so, I can't think back that far. But perhaps not, I mean, don't have to imagine making love to her, I could imagine making love to someone else, couldn't I? Which brings up the issue, doesn't it, of, um, uh, what's it called, um, masturbation. Sort of word that you you know, people shudder at if you raised it in church. 
And you know, your young men this are suffering from it, and they should not be suffering from it. There's nothing, for instance, in the Bible that says thou shalt not masturbate, not commit adultery, not commit fornication, you know. Uh, uh, in other words, making love with outside a commitment to someone. So there's nothing about masturbation. And if, uh, you know, you've got a great chunk of the population, a male, that never have a partner, poor soul. Never have a sex partner. Never have a partner to live with and share their life. Miss all that joy. And you're going to tell them, and you can't look at pictures of naked women. Rubbish. Rubbish. And some women know this. And they actually enjoy giving in that way. Uh, I don't mean being a prostitute. I mean, they're pinups. And, uh, well, I can understand that. How could you deny a man that? He's going to spend his whole life wishing he had a sweetheart, like I've had, and been denied that. For whatever reason, it's not happened. And you're going to take away what he could have? No way. And if he finds in his spiritual quest that the desire for such fades, well, that's fine. But I don't make it a condition of coming to God. No way. If it's not right with God, it will fade. It will fade of itself. You don't have to crucify it. Do you see it? And I touched on another issue then. I'm trying to think what it is. Hang on a sec. Oh yes, prostitution. Look, I'm an economist. Oldest occupation in the world is prostitution. You've given it an extremely appalling bad name. Look, a lady would much rather be loved and in love with someone she's going to be with all her life, who's going to provide and care for her needs, and in particular her children's family needs. Of course she would prefer that. She's not in that situation. She might be desperate in some societies. We don't care for people. We let them starve. Are you going to deny her being prostitute? Are you going to despise her for being it? Are you going to condemn her for doing it? Are you going to condemn the men that come to her? Because they have needs. And their needs are not met by a loving, wonderful relationship with someone that loves them and they love. And does that mean some prostitution is not harmful? I'm, I'm sure it is. Goodness gracious, I'm certain of it, but it depends, doesn't it? So, loving kindness does not condemn prostitution, does not condemn the per person that pays for a prostitute. Quite honestly, it doesn't condemn anyone. In, 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 in that sense, it doesn't judge anyone. In a different sense of the word judge, it's judging all the time. It's trying to work out what brings life and happiness and joy and goodness. Peace. What brings that? And we're making judgments about that all the time. But not judgments of the sort that condemn that... Um, despise certain occupations or, or certain solutions to problems where people are, need that solution. Know your God may not be someone else's God, but know your God. Mm. 
mine is not like that. Mine is. You know, it does, oh, you know, there's another issue, isn't there? I mean, something like, um, what's it called? Uh, I forgot what the word is. Oh, homosexuality or lesbianism or whatever. I'm not going to condemn what they do. No way. Do I find such an attractive occupation? No, I don't. Um, no, I don't. Do I condemn them that they do find it so? No. No. Do I think that if they uh, seek God for real, such practice will fall away and vanish? I don't know. I don't have enough experience of that. You'd have to be, uh, I don't know, lesbian or homosexual to be able to have the opportunity of finding out. Does it fall away as you come to love God? Especially if you both come to love God. Are you then untrue to each other? I doubt it. I really do doubt it. I think on the contrary, you might just be so blessed with a stability of relationship that might not have been there otherwise. I don't know. You could find out. <laughs> you could find out. So, there's a lot of sexual issues that I think most religions have mangled. We are blessed in the modern world in that um, we can make love without necessarily having um, unwanted children, which is a terrible sadness. I think we still need um, some measure of loyalty to each other, else the children aren't really fully provided for. It's very hard as a one parent to have the resources and wherewithal to um, do all you want to do for your children. That doesn't mean to say you don't do all you can. You most certainly do. And perhaps you try the harder because you're more concerned that something might otherwise be missing. But I think it makes life difficult. So, what do I see in the evil of adultery? Thinking of it? No. Doing it? Yes. Yes, because you're putting the nail in the coffin of a relationship that might otherwise have sold it on. Um, if it's really finished already, well, you may be technically married, but perhaps you know it's no longer a reality. And then, well, it's going to be up to your judgment, isn't it? What do you think is going to bring the most happiness? And you may be right, you may be wrong. That's what living's about. Will you be condemned for making the wrong, the wrong decision where it found out to be absolutely the case that that is a wrong decision? Not with my God. My God condemns nobody. He doesn't need to. He's not fearful of anything. He can keep everything in its right place. You know, I mean, well, you know, it's like people that like keeping chickens, well, most towns don't want chickens next door, but you could have a, a town where anyone who wants to keep chickens is perfectly welcome to, couldn't you? Anyone who wants to keep cats can, even though they dig up the neighbor's lawn. And, and if you want to keep a cat, will you live in a society that keeps cats? Or keeps chickens? Or, or walks the dog off the lead? I personally don't like to see dogs off the lead in case the dog's not too safe, especially for kids. But I can imagine you choosing a society where you wish to wave that. Fine. 
Does it make it immoral to um, walk without your dog on the lead? No, but it might be an unhappy consequence. If some people did it with sun dogs, um, so there might be a rule that's more helpful than than not. I don't know. Do you see? We're not authoritarian. We just there's a desire to accommodate every life form, but there's also a desire in us that every life come to a fullness of joy and happiness, peace, prosperity relationship, things that work, life eternal, and we do want that for others, but we don't ram it down their throat, we don't force them to have it, we don't threaten them with hellfire if they don't follow it, well I don't anyway, you don't have to, if you don't make God to some extent in your own image of what's good and right and best, you won't love him. If you don't love him, you get nowhere. You know, if you don't love the Lord your God, your God, with all your heart, soul, mind and strength, you're not going to get anywhere. Love him. You're going to adjust your view of what he is, who he is, from your perspective and your experience. In fact, from his walk with you. You'll find out. And it's a very good experience. The best. The best. Thank you, Heavenly Father.